Hello everybody, my name is Mike Guy, uh, and in this video we are going to be looking at the first part of my mini-series on object-oriented game development. Okay, so before we get started, I just want to go over, you know, real quick, what this is and what this isn't. Um, for those of you who maybe didn't read the, uh, the, the text intro I had. Basically, uh, what I'd like to do is I would like to revisit the, uh, the video game that we made in my Allegro 5 series, uh, the, the side-scrolling shoot, side shooter, um, and I want to handle it in a much more object-oriented approach uh, so we can see how we can you know, encapsulate code and, uh, and I can, so we can look at some of the, um, some of the more uh, advanced principles of object-oriented uh, programming. Now, I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff in these next videos that I don't necessarily have to do. But what I'd like to do is I'd like to use this as sort of a, uh, a, a way of learning all, all facets of, of inheritance, uh, object-oriented programming, polymorphism, just, just all those keywords, all those buzzwords uh, you see when you, when you read about C++ and object-oriented programming. I'd like to touch base on pretty much all of them. So, um, so we're going to be doing a lot of stuff that, like I said, I, I don't necessarily need to do, but I want to do to make this as broad of a series as possible. Um, Another preface is the side-scrolling shooter is a really simple game. Uh, as such, um, I don't need to do this object-oriented approach, right? Um, I mean, we made it work just fine, you know, with what we had with Shrux and everything. Um, but you know, we can make it better. You know, um, we can make the code better, um, and it's not going to benefit us much here. It's actually going to probably be the same amount of work, if not a little bit more. But what it will enable us to do is make the game very extensible. And what I mean by extensible is I mean it will be easy to man manage and easy to maintain, uh, easy to upgrade, okay? easy to add new features like that. And you're going to see, we're going to spend a lot of time developing a class called our game object, and it's going to make the development of our other objects very quick. okay? And uh, so we're going to see that's going to be the power of inheritance, and we're going to see some of that stuff. So I uh, just wanted to give a real, a real quick intro in this video um, to let you know that what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be going a little little off the reservation uh, so that I can cover as many topics as possible. Um, also, oh here's a good note, if you haven't, uh, if you haven't looked at the Allegro 5 uh, 2D game development series I developed, you're going to want to check that out because uh, this code is all Allegro 5, C++ with the Allegro 5 library, which uh, if you haven't seen that, you'll st if you don't know Allegro 5, these, the, that's not going to be a problem. You can still watch this. You won't be able to follow along unless you have it installed, but you'll be able to watch this and you'll still understand what I'm doing. But, you know, it, it can be a good thing to know a little bit so, um, so, okay, with that said, we can go ahead and get started. Now what I have is I have just pretty much a, a, an empty project. I just started a new project, uh, created a main.cpp, uh, linked the library, and, and, and included my shell code. So, um, oops, F5. Apparently reloads my, my slide show there. Um, there we go. Okay. So you can see window, frames per second. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. So just the way we'd expect. Um, I haven't modified anything yet. So this is this is all you know, exactly as we've seen before. Do I, the first thing I want to do is I'm just going to come down here to my render section. I'm going to comment out that. I don't want to see my frames per second uh, because, you know, I'm making a game. I don't, I don't really care. Um, if I wanted to leave it in for diagnostics, but I don't. So... Uh, I'm just going to go comment that out. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the structure we're going to use here. Um, we're going to have uh, basically uh, a few distinct parts. We're going to have our main.cpp, all right, our main. Um, this That's going to be like the heart of our game, the, the engine that's driving our game. Um, we are going to have classes, okay, um, object classes for all of the game objects in our game. So we're going to have a base class, we're going to have a player class, uh, background class, comic class, bullet class, um, and we're going to walk through developing all those. We are going to have a globals.h, where we're going to keep things like our enumerations. Uh, so, yep, we're going to have that. Um, and finally, inside of our main, we're going to have uh, a list. Okay, uh, and I don't mean like uh, I don't mean like a list on a piece of paper. I mean like the, the collection, the the the, um, uh, the, the C plus C plus plus collection list. Uh, we're going to use this to keep track of all of our game objects, to, to get them all to render, and get them all to update, um, and to, to get them all functioning pretty much autonomously. 
uh, and we'll see how that works. So before I really get into it, I'm going to go ahead and include some extra libraries here. Or I'm sorry, not libraries, header files here. So I'm going to do pound include Allegro 5, oops, Allegro audio, and pound include Allegro 5, Allegro A codec. I'm also going to do include list. Right? That'll allow us to use our list. Great. Now I'm going to go ahead and add a header file here. I'm going to come over to my header files. I'm going to do add new item and I'm going to do an H file and I'm going to say, say globals.h. Alright. And in my globals.h, that's where I'm going to keep everything that is global. Okay. Um, so my width and my height right here, I'm actually going to cut those out of there. Um, I could have left them there, but I want to make them global to all of my classes. So I'm going to put them here. Ooh, here's another important one I almost forgot. At the top, I'm going to do pragma once. Now here's the deal with pragma once. Um, basically, uh, pragma once is basically saying, hey, define this H file only one time. So if it's included by multiple uh, locations, you're not going to get a redefinition error or a redeclaration error. All right? You can use that pound if not defined then define and if, you know, uh, if you've done any C++ programming, you're familiar with what I'm talking about. This effectively does the same thing. Uh, I was reading, I don't, you know, maybe someone can help me out and, and confirm or deny this. I was reading that it was optimized for several compilers. Uh, the Pragma 1 statement is optimized for several compilers. That was good enough for me. I started using it and I haven't had any problems. I've actually had some issues where I've had compiler errors using the if and if, in the if and if, the if not defined where Pragma once has cleared those up. So um, that's why I have that there. And you're going to see that on the top of all of my H files. Um, my game is 800 by 400. And while I'm here, I'm also going to do a few more enumerations. Uh, these will all be familiar to you. I'm going to have my ID enumeration. And I'm going to have player, enemy, bullet, and a new one, border. Okay, and we'll see how that plays out. And miscellaneous. And those are for like backgrounds and stuff. We're also going to have enum state, and our states are going to be title, playing, and lost. Okay, so that's good enough for me there. I'll go ahead and save everything, come back to main, and I'm going to do pound include quotes globals dot h. All right. So we see that here, uh, local files are quotes, um, non-local files are these greater than less than signs. Awesome. Okay, so now that we have that underway, we can go ahead and start getting our list ready to go, and we can start prepping ourselves uh, to before we start making our classes. So down here, uh, still in my global range, but you know, but below my enum keys. Um, by the way, I could have put these in my global but they're so specific to main and they're not needed anywhere else um, that I'm, you know, I'm just going to leave them right here. Now I'm going to type slash slash globals and this can be a place where we can declare uh, some of our, our, our global variables that are still local to main. So they don't, they're not necessarily uh, global to everything, they're just global to main. All right. Um, okay, so that's going to conclude this video here. In the next video we're going to look at creating our game object um, and then we are going to look at uh, creating, you know, our, our list and and start plugging these items into our game.